Well, I was messing around with this little electric uh, sharp knife sharpener. It's, uh, it's like a $30 knife sharpener. It's made for like kitchen knives and small knives. And uh, <laughs> my little cat down there. Uh, I was figured, I wonder if I can sharpen this uh, big western buoy, western outlaw buoy. It's much bigger than the average buoy. And I was wondering if I can get it in here. It's a little bit thick, you know. You look how thin these are. This is really for kitchen knives. But I put a little oil on there, and it worked. And, you know, I was able to do this one easy, too. This one's, um, these are cheap knives. And these are, you could say, ah, these are no good. Use this kind of sharpener. But they're good for everyday knives. And you get these $10 knives. In other words, I got good knives, and I got everyday knives. And everyday knives I use for stuff that... I really shouldn't use the good knife for it. You can chip it up or something. You might be scraping some corrosion off or something, or I don't know, maybe going through something that might have a piece of metal in it. So I use everyday knives for that. This thing basically is an axe chopper. I don't know if I can get it on here. See that? You can't, uh, you gotta hold down this thing though. You gotta hold down this. You gotta hold this with, other, with your other hand. So, I'm gonna try this. See, I'm stuck the knife in there. And you know, what I did was I put a little oil on it. You notice this was like opening up this plastic here. Because it's really, but you know, it got it sharp. It's sharp, man. And this is nothing but uh, 420 stainless steel. But it's not a problem because look how damn thick that thing is. It's almost a quarter inch thick up on the spine. And it's full tang going all the way through. See that? So even though it's 420 stainless steel, well, okay, it might chip a little bit or something or get dull quicker. But if you got this damn thing, you can get it up in here pretty far. I'd say I'm sharpening it from about here. Maybe I'm not getting this last part here, but you know, you could use a pull-through sharpener for that. But it's definitely working on it. it does a good job. And I, and I tell you what, with a big knife like this, you can use just the coarse side. You only need to use the fine side on it because basically this thing is kind of a chopper. <laughs> like this thing, it's actually not bad. But it's so heavy that it's almost better to take an axe with you, but it's not a bad, you know, for what you pay for it, 20 bucks, you can't beat it. You know, you pay like, like 8 bucks for something like this. It says, uh, don't tread on me with the snake. And, uh, you know, it's just a liner lock, but it's got two ways of opening. You can open it this way, or you can, uh, you got this side right here. Plus, it's got glass breaker on it, and a can opener, <laughs> bottle opener, excuse me, bottle opener. But, you know, these cheap knives are good, and that's what you need uh, one of these little electric knife sharpeners for, because... You know, you're going to go nuts trying to freaking, you get at your Arkansas stone or something like that, and you really, you can say, well, why get a cheap knife in the first place? Well, first off, sometimes you don't want to carry your good knife where you might lose it, especially if you're out on a boat or something like that, and uh, you never know, you might drop it or something. And, um, you know, sometimes you're working on a car or something, or you're just, you're doing something like, I don't know, maybe you're messing around with that chain link fence stuff back there or something like that. And uh, you, know, you can be, you can be uh, you know, putting a chip in a blade, right, on a, on a good knife. And uh, you see you're working on that fence thing or something back here. And then, I don't know, maybe you accidentally, you're cutting some plastic ties or something and you accidentally hit the, the metal. You know, that's why I don't like using, I don't like using a good knife for a lot of stuff, man. Because most of the stuff I use a knife for is not really what a knife is designed for. And the reason I do that is because you know, I'll carry a knife on me at all times. See, here's one right here in my little boot shoe here. 
I mean, I don't carry this sucker on me all the time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's like uh, cheap knives, yeah, they get dull quicker, right? But so what? You get a cheap freaking sharpener. And yeah, I, I got some I got some K bars and stuff like that, and I got the old timer, and I got another uh, I got a German one that's uh, been in Germany. I forgot what the name of it was, but it's a it's a real high quality one. So I got a Buffalo Skinner type knife. But I really don't like using those knives too much because I don't want to screw them up. <laughs> and that's it's like, you know, I guess if you say yeah, I'm going to go out in the survival, who the heck goes out in a survival situation? Usually you're just using an everyday beater knives, right? These little sharpeners like this are good. And I was just curious if it can sharpen something like this. If it could sharpen this, it could sharpen any Bowie or Bowie. You know, it could sharpen any one of them. Did a good job on it too, man. You see like some of the, see the metal that came off of there. Gotta watch the way I put my finger on there too. Yeah, it took, it took, it ground a nice angle. Once it grinds that angle, you're good to go. And I don't think I'm ever going to use the fine side for this because, you know, it's such a, but it's sharp. It's sharp, man. You can feel it. You can feel it. It's pretty sharp. Converse to the size blade it is. And what it took me? Less than a minute. Uh, some, you know, sometimes uh, people ignore these <laughs> cheap stuff. Sometimes the cheap stuff is good to go, man. And, you know, this freaking electric sharpener breaks after I sharpen maybe, use it maybe several hundred times at least. Probably got my money's worth out of it. Because, you know, those pull-through sharpeners only last so long. They'll run you, you know, the, the ones with the handle that are bigger. Um, they don't run you 30 bucks or something, but they might run you 15. You know, so I'm happy with this. <laughs> Just curious if it would work on this. Again, I had to put a little oil on here because... It's, it fits through the plastic, you're kind of tight, and it actually bows open the plastic a little bit. But still, I was able to sharpen it. Did a great job. Right there, kitty cat onyx? I think this is onyx. Yeah, that's the baby, that's the boy. That's the boy cat. Mama looks just like him. <laughs> it's, it's weird, his little son's like a twin of the mama. The other two look like halfway between mama and daddy. So... Just passing this on, it's common sense. You know, people, and these people that talk about, ah, don't get these cheap knives, don't, don't, don't use that kind of a sharpener. Well, that's true if you're freaking, um, depends on what you're doing. Um, but most people aren't really using a knife like, you know, bushcraft out there in the woods, and, you know, they're not using it for that. They're using it for stuff that might, where they might hit some kind of metal or something. <laughs> and, will screw it up, you know. So it's, it's, it's good to get a cheap knife sometimes. You can screw them up a little bit, get a couple chips in them, and you're not going to give a damn. You know, you're not um, hammering a damn thing in a tree and trying to stand on it or something like that. And actually, this knife is like this knife, whatever you want to call it, it's like a freaking machete practically. Um, even though it's 420 stainless steel, look how damn, this thing is so damn thick. And it's all full tang. It's, it ain't gonna fall apart. That's what I usually do as I look at the construction of the knives. And sometimes I took, um, like some of the other ones that were like, I don't know, they were like ten bucks, not even ten bucks. All eight stainless steel. I took the handle off of them, and I JB welded the handle on it, even though it was full tang. I JB welded the handle on there, chemically cleaned it, gently JB welded that handle. And that thing is like, um, I mean, it's just as good as a fifty dollar knife. And that's got a funny shape to it, and I figured that's a, that's this one works. I know the other one will work. It's got a funny shape to it. In other words, it kind of bows out like this, and it comes back in. It's hard to sharpen on a stone. That thing's perfect. You know, don't let anybody freaking talk you out of buying some of this cheaper stuff. I mean, yeah, you want the good stuff too, but the cheap stuff is good for like most of your uses. It's not like you're going out there and. Uh, being dropped off in the back of uh, enemy lines and you need the best equipment there is because it's your only knife for survival and you know what I mean. That's what sells everything. You, you can do pretty good with some of these ten dollar knives and this is this thing's only twenty bucks. I think that was like eight bucks. Some pretty good stuff and yeah they, they get dull for not that they don't dull up that fast, but say they get dull, put them through that thing, take you two seconds, you gotta you know 
I mean, even this thing took like under a minute to do that one. This one took like about 15 seconds. So, what's the problem, right? And it's not like you're out there in the back of the freaking enemy lines where you don't have an electric sharpener. Most of no, it's like I said, if you're going to be out there camping uh, for two weeks, take your good stuff. Most people aren't doing that. Just be practical about it. Right there, kitty cat. <laughs> and all these guys are accounted for. I sold Boots the Confederate Cat to Daddy last night on a security camera, so they're all good to go.